Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back for his second appearance on Speaking of Data, David Langer. He joined us uh, about a year ago for episode 17. For folks that are interested, it was on uh, uh, data literacy. It was a fantastic episode, and it's been a while since we've had a chat, so I'm very excited to have you back on the show today. We're going to talk about real-world techniques for machine learning in our series of machine learning episodes that we're in the middle of right now. Uh, but before we dive into all the good content, Dave, say, thank you so much for your time today. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me back. Um, I'd love to be on the TDWI podcast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to have you on. I'm excited to talk with you about this. Uh, before we dive into the actual questions, for those that didn't have an opportunity to listen to episode 17, we've gained quite a few. Luckily, we've gained quite a few listeners since episode 17. Would you mind giving us just a brief background about yourself, your expertise? Yeah, so I'm a long-term technology professional, um, approaching 28 years now. And I've done everything from help desk to being a software engineer, enterprise architect, and then I've spent about half that time in hands-on analytics roles in data. So I started, like a lot of folks did, with traditional reporting and data warehousing and that sort of thing. And all the way up through and including production machine learning. So these days I'm an independent consultant and trainer with TDWI, where I focus mostly on hands-on practical data science skills and also help my clients take a practical approach to data science. Fantastic. And and as I did mention, data literacy is a big part of uh, what you've done with TDWI in the past. Machine learning, obviously, uh, well within your purview. Uh, so I'm excited to go into to this topic with you on this episode today. Uh, yeah, so kind of like end to end, right? Yeah. From, <laughs> from the basics all the way to the advanced stuff exactly. <laughs> and everything in between. <laughs> um, so, you know, with that, uh, it has, it's been about a year. So what what's what's been going on with you since we've th talked last I, I heard recently that you were recognized for helping professionals build analytics and data science skills. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I data literacy is still a big part of my practice, but not surprisingly, given what's going on over the past year or so, I've seen a lot of my a lot of demand, a lot of shift into the more advanced analytics. I'll use that <laughs> term loosely. So I've been doing a lot with Python and Excel, for example, which is a new thing that Microsoft has in public preview. And as a result of my work with that and my evangeliz evangelization of it, I've been lucky enough to be named a Microsoft Excel MVP, most valued professional. Congratulations. So that, yeah, thanks. That was something I never <laughs> never really expected to have happen, but <laughs> um, it is interesting. And also earlier this year in 2024, I was named a LinkedIn top voice. Um, that's a awesome. small cadre of folks that are consistently um, publishing to the LinkedIn platform. And of course, I focus on data and analytics. So it was, cool. it was cool to be recognized for my contributions to the LinkedIn community in that space. Well, I'm curious because I want to jump in based on you know your what you told us about your past. Uh, I'd love to learn a little bit more about how a former software engineer became a Microsoft Excel MVP exactly. Yeah, it seems kind of strange, doesn't it, right? Um, and I will be completely honest. Well, early in my career, when I was coding full time, I hated Microsoft Excel. I thought it was the most evil thing in the world. <laughs> Literally, at that point in time, I'm just like, why doesn't everyone just learn SQL and query the database directly? Right. Because, you know, I was a young guy and I was like, you know, very, very passionate. And what it took, what I realized over the years was that the reason why Excel is so common and so commonly misused is not because it's inherently bad. It's just the fact that it's the most ubiquitous data tool there is by far, right? By far. Estimates are what, 700 million Excel users worldwide, something like that. So for a long time, I've been creating content, YouTube tutorials and things like that around how to do analysis and analytics using Excel out of the box features. And when Python and Excel came out, I was like, wow, this is, this is like, the crowning jewel of Microsoft finally making Excel the de facto standard analytics tool in the world. And it combined two things that I liked, Excel and helping business people, professionals of any kind, have more impact at work using data and coding, because <laughs> I do like code. <laughs> so uh, I was on, I jumped on that Python and Excel bandwagon early, like um, I was read in before it was actually announced publicly back last year. And I've been doing classes and LinkedIn posts and YouTube tutorials on it. And I'm just really super excited about it because it provides a very practical way for millions of professionals 
to unlock the power of advanced analytics. And they don't need to do anything fancy, right? They don't need to involve their IT department. They don't need to install Python and worry about all that. It's just right there. If you can't tell, I'm excited. <laughs> about well, it, it sounds like you sounds like you've been hoping for this for for quite some time, and now it's finally been realized. <laughs> yeah, because for a long time, what I did was I said, "Look, hey, if you if you have Microsoft Excel skills, I can easily teach you how to do our programming, and 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 do more advanced analytics." But you had to shift out of Excel and R, and that required people to install R and learn R, have their IT departments in a lot of cases help them out, and people were just like they just weren't really into it all that much. <laughs> But Microsoft, I think, I'm not going to claim that they're piggybacking on my idea because I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> but they're they're recognizing that the last mile of making Excel essentially a de facto standard data science platform was incorporating something like Python into it. And the way they've set it up is 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 great. I have many clients that are super excited about it. Awesome. Well, I, I know that there's got to be some version of AIML within this that we're going to get into at this point. So uh, I'm assuming you might be focusing on, you know, using Microsoft Excel and, and AI within that to help professionals be more productive. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And in and for, for the benefit of the listeners, or just mainly because I can't help myself, can't decide which, we have to realize that AI is an umbrella term in the computer science realm, right? So and it, co it encompasses lots of different topics, and machine learning is one of them. For example, Chad GPT is a very, very sophisticated machine learning model. Don't get me wrong. It's extremely sophisticated and very powerful. But technically, it is a machine learning model. <laughs> so what I tend to focus on is, yes, AI, but insofar as I focus on those subset of machine learning techniques that are actually disproportionately useful for most organizations. So for example, I don't focus a lot on Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, which is essentially their chat GPT integration into Excel, because generally speaking, you still have to understand what's going on. So for example, if you ask Copilot that, you know, the, you give it a prompt and say, Hey, generate me a predictive model based on the data in this particular table in my worksheet in Excel, it will certainly do that for you. It'll produce Python code. But if you don't understand the Python code, and if you don't understand the modeling process or what it's actually generating, you're asking for you're asking for a world of hurt potentially. So, so I tend to focus more on saying, look, yes, you could certainly use Copilot and generative AI to accelerate these things, but you still have to learn the fundamentals first, right? So that's what I tend to focus on a lot um, is on practical machine learning approaches, um, the various tools and techniques that are disproportionately valuable for any professional, no matter where they work. Mm. Can you maybe dive into that just one one more step deeper and provide like an example of of something that that you you might be helping folks out with from a you know from a, a professional's point of view and and yep. yeah yeah that'd be great. so the single most common use case for machine learning or AI if you want to use that more general term is the ability to create models that predict labels so for example is this customer going to convert yes or no um, let's say you're trying to predict gold medal winners at the Olympics. So you'd be predicting bronze, silver, and gold, or no medal, right? So that'd be four different kinds of things that you're trying to predict. In machine learning terms, that's known as classification. I'm trying to predict a class, a label. And that is by far and away the single most ROI packed advanced analytics scenario for any organization. And it's not just me saying that. For example, Andrew, uh, Andrew Ang, who's like a big, huge brain in the AI community, like way smarter than me. He says exactly the same thing. So it's not me saying it. I'm just piggybacking and saying on the shoulders of giants. As it were. <laughs> so I focus a lot on that. And to train people um, to build these kinds of predictive models that do these classification problems, the single best technique is are based on something called decision trees, decision trees, random forests. So that's what I spend most of my time teaching because they're state of the art. They're super easy for people to learn and they're super valuable. Mm-hmm. And and uh, am I correct in assuming that, you know, uh, the word professional, I think, can sometimes be a tough one to define. Am I assuming that a lot of these folks are, are kind of like where we started the conversation are not, you know, necessarily already, you know, uh, familiar with code and different types of languages. And, and then that's how you're, you're edging them towards using this uh, through the more commonly used Excel, right? Yeah. So so we, we should really kind of like differentiate the two audiences. So as you mentioned, I teach a lot for TDWI at all the conferences and I do seminars and that sort of thing. And TDWI's customer base tends to be te technical, generally speaking, yeah. right? In one shape or form, 
data management, data warehousing, who, you know, that sort of thing. And those folks are familiar with coding, if nothing else, because they're familiar with SQL a lot of the times. And then there's another audience, which Python and Excel really targets, which essentially is 700 plus million users worldwide, which could run the gamut. So I tend to focus on content for both. Mm -hmm. And my, my speciality is making all this stuff really, really approachable. So for example, folks who register for my Python data science type courses at TDWI get access to a four, four hour free tutorial that teaches them the basics of Python, everything they need to know from the ground up, assuming no programming background whatsoever, just teaches them just the, the subset of Python they need to be productive. So that kind of experience is also applicable for Excel users as well, because if you've ever written an Excel formula, you've written code, whether mm -hmm. you think of it that way or not, it's all pretty much the same, honestly, <laughs> it really is. And when you think about using something like Python for analytics and data science, you're not actually engineering software from scratch. So you ignore all that stuff and you just focus on how to use the tools to get stuff done, which is very analogous to using Excel formulas, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes so, a lot of sense. With the exception of lambdas, of course, because we don't, we don't need to get into that today, but lambdas is a whole other thing <laughs> <laughs> inside of Excel. We'll, we'll avoid that for this, for this particular conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. So if, if most organizations will get that highest returns, you talked about ROI there briefly uh, before I, uh, did a couple of follow-up questions there, but going back to that, if they're going to get the highest ROI from, you know, quote unquote, traditional machine learning, what is it they should be focusing on? Yeah, it's a great question. And I talked to a lot of my clients about this. Um, and so how I land a lot of my clients for my consulting work is this idea that you don't need to learn a whole bunch of things to actually be radically productive to begin with. Um, most people look at a book and they're like, oh my goodness, there's 50 different types of machine learning techniques in here. Do I have to learn all of them? No. There are essentially four fundamental techniques that you need to learn in the beginning. Decision trees, which are just individual trees, right? Like a little node and hey, yes, no. And then you go down. Everyone's familiar with decision trees. If, you, mm -hmm. if you've ever seen an org chart, that's what a decision tree kind of looks like. <laughs> yeah. So everyone's pretty, it's pretty intuitive to understand how to use decision trees. And you learn the basics of machine learning focusing on decision trees. And then what you do is then you use that knowledge to bootstrap in what's called the random forest. And the random forest is just a collection of individual decision trees, forest trees. Makes sense, right? Love it when it's intuitive. <laughs> and random forests are state of the art. They are a production quality, state of the art machine learning algorithm. And they're really, really simple for people to learn how to use. You don't necessarily have to be a math genius or even, even, <laughs> even a math novice really to understand how they work. It's really, really simple. But yet it gives you all that power. So decision trees, random forests. That's what's known as supervised learning. So can I predict those labels that I was talking about? Mm -hmm. And then the next branch of machine learning that's very, really useful for people is what's known as clustering. So I got a pile of data. I got a pile of customers. I got a pile of patients. I got a pile of insurance claims, whatever it might be, a pile of documents. And I want to extract some hidden structure out of that data because I don't want to Let's take the document example. I don't want to have to read through a thousand documents to understand what they're all about. Can I use the computer to like group those and say, hey, these documents are alike and these documents over here are alike and these documents here are alike and help me out with that. And that's what clustering is all about, cluster analysis. So wildly, wildly useful in machine learning terms as known as unsupervised learning. And then in that space, you learn something called K-means, which is extremely easy. I've even taught business people how K-means works, by the way. So anybody can learn how to do it. And then something called DB scan. So you, those four things, those four things are really enough to get you started. And that's what we tend to focus on in our TDWI courses because they are easy for a broad audience to learn. They're state of the art and they allow people to hit the ground running when they get back to work to actually do something that produces value. Fantastic. And I, you kind of alluded to it there, but I, I'm assuming... Uh, this is the great opportunity for us to discuss exactly my, what what will be uh, be what 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 you will be teaching uh, at the uh, boot camp coming up in June. As I mentioned in the, early, in the beginning of this episode, June twenty fourth through twenty sixth, uh, is that is that right? Like, are people able to take these three days and kind of get started by by taking this boot camp? Yeah. So this is this is a great thing that TDWI is doing. So traditionally, I've taught these three days of a, of a hands-on courses as a boot camp only at TDWI conferences. Right. right. Um, for example, I just taught in Chicago 
earlier yeah. this month. And for a lot of folks, that's just not realistic, right? For whatever reason, they can't leave, get away from home. The budget constraints of actually doing travel are too high, whatever it might be, right? So some reason they can't make it. So TWI said, hey, we're going to try this out as a virtual boot camp next month in June. And it's the same exact format. So it's three days of live training. You will learn, surprisingly enough, <laughs> decision trees, random forests, K-means, DB scan. You will also learn coding techniques and how to evaluate your data and wrangle your data for machine learning. And that's over the course of three days. It's hands-on. There are 15 labs that we cover over those three days. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you sign up for any of the courses, you don't have to sign up for all three, but if you sign up for any of the courses, you get access to the four hour Python quick start online tutorial. So it's really designed to take somebody who maybe has never written any Python code at all, maybe never done any advanced analytics before, and then bootstrap them into skills so that the following week they can come back to work and be like, hey, I got a data set. I'm off and running. That's the whole point. Fantastic. And I, I believe within that, you are able to earn a certificate uh, if you complete all three of these days. We do have a TDWI certificate track as well. So if you're interested in you know learning more about that, we, we can certainly point you in the right direction in the description of this episode. But certainly unbelievable amount of value in just three days. And like you're saying, you can leave that and go back to your job and have this whole new skill set that you're providing extra value for, for your organization. It's fantastic. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I know that sounds kind of well, of course, Dave, you're going to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> really, honestly, there are, I've had folks come, they come to a TWI conference, they take the classes from me, they take the boot camp all three days, they get the certificate, they go back to work and they email me a week later, a month later, a quarter later, and they're like, I built my first model and my boss was super happy. So this is, this is legit stuff that you're learning and you can learn actionable skills within three days. You really can. You just have to focus on just the stuff that really, really matters. And then of course you can learn all the other machine learning stuff later on if you want. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming that a lot of people when they when they start on this on this particular journey, they might find themselves uh, you know, hyped up and ready to learn more as as they as they want to, you know, progress. Uh, but you know, Dave, I, I do uh, I always enjoy talking with you. And, and before you go, I want to let people know how how they can reach out to you if they're curious and following up, asking some questions here. Uh, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you, please? Yeah, so they can drop me an email, dave at davondata.com. That goes right into my inbox. If they got any questions about the, the bootcamp or anything else, they can send me an email. LinkedIn's also a good place as well. Um, follow me. They can follow me on LinkedIn, see my content, send me a direct message on LinkedIn. I'm also on LinkedIn all the time as well. Terrific. Dave, thank you so much for your time today. It's always a pleasure talking with you. And uh, for all those that are interested, go back to our episode 17 or just go to LinkedIn and Dave's page. There's so much content on there, uh, YouTube channel as well. So uh, there's a lot of places that you can find Dave uh, outside of those two the little spots that he mentioned as well. I uh, really appreciate uh, your time and attention here. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. To subscribe to the Speaking of Data podcast or to learn more about TDWI's research and training on all things data management and analytics, visit tdwi.org or click the link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in.